guys, today we're going to discuss position sense or proprioception and how it can lead to injuries. So what is position sense? I think the easiest way to figure it out is to close your eyes and think about concentrating your ankle. Can you feel where your foot and your toes and everything is? Now, point your toes down so that your ankle moves down, then pull them back up. Now turn your foot in and then turn your foot out. Can you see how in your mind's eye you can actually form a picture of where your ankle is and how it's moving? Position sense or proprioception is the ability of the brain to know exactly where every joint, every muscle, everything is without having to look at them. It knows this through little receptors that you find in your muscles, in your joints, in your tendons and your ligaments and even your skin. So as you move the skin stretches or the ligament stretches and it tells your body or your brain where your body parts are in relation to each other. Now, for position sense to be 100%, your brain then has to first receive those messages, interpret them, and then has to output the controlled movement in a way that you move your body part then exactly where the brain wants it. If you've ever had your arm or your leg or something in a cast, you'll know when it comes out immediately, you really struggle to control it. And as if it doesn't belong to you. That's because your position sense and the messages between the brain and that body part has become a little bit weak because you haven't used it for so long. Now the good news is it's really easy to retrain. Um, but before I get to that actually maybe I should discuss how it can cause injury, injuries. So if you think about when you're running around or even just walking on uneven ground your brain has to calculate every single step to make sure that you use the correct number of muscles or the correct amount of contraction and that everything is nice and controlled. If you want to think about a, a time when the brain doesn't get it right is imagine walking down the stairs and you misjudge the last step. So you think you're at the bottom but you're not at the bottom and you go to step down and you expect a step about of this height and instead you get a double step of that height. You know how you jolt yourself and it's all just because the brain wasn't prepared for it. It had calculated everything you needed for that step, but you gave it that step instead. Or even when you're walking on the sidewalk or the pavement and suddenly there's a little incline that you didn't expect. You know how you catch your foot on that? Again, it's just the brain didn't see it, didn't realize it was there and it miscalculated your step. Now, another example of when people don't have it, think of older people who struggle to walk on uneven ground. Again, that's because their feet and their brain aren't totally connected and they're not quite sure where they're placing their feet. And they usually compensate by looking at their feet and going really slowly because then the eyes can give the brain some feedback as well. So you can imagine if you're running around on a football pitch and you don't quite know where your ankles are or your knees are, how easy you can sprain or injure them. Now, why do our position sense become a problem? First of all, injury. If you've pulled a muscle or you've sprained a ligament or injured a joint, that message temporarily gets a little bit fuzzy to the brain. And if you don't retrain it properly, it can stay that way and you can have a, a weakness um, for a very long time after. That's why if you've gone over on your ankle once, it's so easy in the next few weeks to just sprain it just walking on flat ground. Now, the second reason is if you don't use the body part in that way quite often. So think about... Um, your typical runner who runs just for pleasure and sits at their desk most of the time. So yes, you're walking around and things, but you're not really using your limbs in a way that the brain struggles to con or has to work hard to control them. So through that, the control can actually decrease. And then when you run, you can be at risk of injuries. Then the third reason is genetics. People who are hypermobile, where your ligaments don't stabilize you properly, tend to have um, less pos or decreased position sense when people test them. And then there's a fourth reason, which I've just forgotten, but I may come back to it in a minute. Let me just think. We've got injury, we've got disuse, then there is um, hypermobility. And then there are certain conditions where if your nerves are slightly damaged through back injury or something like that, you can also struggle with that. Okay, so the good news is it's very easy to retrain and I use 
when we think about lower limbs, I use two specific types of exercise. I use plain balance exercises, and then I also use squat type exercises. The balancing is important because when you balance, when you think about walking and running, there's always a period in that cycle where you're actually on one leg and where balance is a big component. And when you balance, your brain has to know exactly where each joint is so that it can adjust the muscles that it contracts to keep you in that perfect position. The second, the squat position, mimics the action we use during running and walking. And if we can slow that down and make sure that we control it in a controlled way when we're doing the exercises, that then translates back to running and walking. So I'll show you my top three exercises of each of them to get you started with that. Okay, so the first exercise for proprioception or position sense is just balancing on one leg. And where you start is you make sure that when you balance your pelvis stays in alignment so you're not going to drop a hip to go into a balancing position you're not allowed to move your arms all over the place they could be in your hips and this leg has to be free and not pressed into the other one and make sure that your foot stays level that it does not collapse in so it doesn't do that okay so very simply tighten up your tummy muscles look straight ahead and you're balancing on one leg now your aim with this should be to be able to balance for 30 seconds without losing it or creating a wide sway. So if you, if you look like this, then you haven't quite passed. You've got to be able to stand dead still and look in one direction. Now once you can do 30 seconds of this without falling over, you then progress yourself and see can you do this balancing on one leg while moving your head slowly from side to side. Now, I find this one a lot more challenging and I can already feel that my foot is starting to do that and struggling to stay there. So I would want to work on this until I become as solid as the previous one before I move on to the next. Now, again, if you find that quite easy, you can do things like you can move your arms as if you're running, you can move your leg if you want to, the other leg, but you'll notice that I'm staying nice and stable and I'm not all over the place. And then the ultimate is to Close your eyes, because now you take all visible feedback out of it and your brain has to rely totally on the position sense that it's getting back from the joints and muscles. And you can see that immediately I'm swaying a lot more and I'm really struggling to stay there. Um, so again, I would work for 30 seconds at least on each side where I could do that nice and solid. Now, once you're good on just the plain floor, you can introduce things like balance boards that you can stand on and do activities on you can balance on one leg on a balance board if you want or you also get wobbly cushions and things but don't go on to those exercises if you haven't already nailed the previous easy ones that i've shown you um, because you're not running on a balance board out there you're running on flat ground so make sure that you nail these down first now the second bit is about using a squat to retrain the brain's ability to move your legs in the position that you want to, them to move in. So let's start with a double leg squat because that's what you've got to be able to do first. When you squat, what we're looking for is that your knee moves in line with the middle of your foot. Your feet does not have to, do not have to be pointing straight forwards. If it feels natural for you to have them slightly out, that's absolutely fine, but you're still going to make sure that your knees move in the middle with your feet then. So mine feels comfortable when I have it there. Okay, so when I squat down, I keep my knees in line with the middle of my foot. What I don't want to see is them coming in or going far out. I'm pushing my bottom out to the back and I'm keeping my chest up. I'm also just tightening up my tummy muscles that I'm not just using my back muscles. So to show you from the side, I'm sticking my bottom out and I'm keeping my body, upper body upright. And you'll notice that my knees aren't going over the front of my feet. They're just staying in alignment. And I'm trying to get down to 90 degrees. And then I'm coming back up. Okay, so for me, that's relatively easy because I've practiced it a lot. The step up from that would be to start doing a single leg squat. Where we're now combining a bit of balance with the squat movement. This is quite a hard exercise and we're only looking for about a 60 degree angle which is roughly to about there when you do it. You don't have to go to 90 degrees, but work your way up to it. 
So for this, you're balancing on one leg, but you're using your other leg on a chair behind you so that it adds a little bit of stability for you. And then what we want, exactly the same, you stick your bottom out to the back and you squat down, keeping your pelvis nice and level that you don't see that happening, okay? And come back up. So you're squatting down, pushing your bottom out to the back. Do not drop your hip like that, okay? Keep them level and come back up. To show you from the side, what I'm doing is I've got a foot on there, sticking my bottom out and just coming down and slowly back up. Good, then the step up from that. And I've got a feeling I'm going to struggle with this today because we had sports days two days ago and I had to sprint, which I never do. So my quads are quite tired. Is to do a single leg sit to stand as an exercise. Okay, so you're on one leg, exactly the same principles we've been using now. Pelvis stays aligned, you lean forward, you come up on one leg, but now you can see how I wobble when I do that. That's not a perfect one. And then you slowly go back down and sit down again. Okay, so for me, I would really have to work to get that wobble out. And I may even use one finger on the wall at the beginning to steady myself and teach myself that movement until I'm very good with it. And then I do it without. And you are not allowed to use momentum. Now, if you find it really hard to do this from chair height, you can just add a few pillows so that you do it from a slightly higher chair or higher surface first and you'll find that it's a lot easier. Okay, so let me know if you've got any questions. Um, also remember, if you want specific injury advice, I do consultations via Skype and you can check out the website details are on the bottom. Let me know if you've got questions. Take care.